One of the most disgusting things I think I can think of is somebody who is in a position of authority or even a position of spirituality where people will buy into this and they will trust you blindly just because of the name tag that you wear, because of the uh, ordination that you have. That's actually a pretty big word. I actually use it in the right context. Because this ordained person that you guys see on my screen, along with him and his wife, have done some very heinous things. I'm going to give you the details, but before we get into the details, if this is your first time here, I got to warn you about my type of content. Some viewers may find the following content offensive and controversial. The information in this video comes from multiple sources, including court records, official police charges, news web articles, and interviews. This video commentary also contains my personal opinions about the facts of this story. The point is to use this story as a cautionary tale in hopes of preventing tragedies like these to children going forward. Viewer discretion is advised. That is your official disclaimer. I had a gnat in here I've been trying to kill and that thing actually settled down finally and I was able to kill it. Them gnats are annoying. Absolutely annoying. I'm sorry, but that was throwing me off. Well, without any further ado, this story coming out of, let me see. We'll figure it out here in a minute, but I'm getting this story from lawandcrime.com. So thank you so much for the article. They call this man a traveling evangelist, which is more basically a fancy name for a preacher. Him and his wife, who publicly begged for money so they could take their ministry across the United States, they were indicted in Tennessee, so there you go, Tennessee, on child rape and uh, abuse charges in connection with allegations, action, alle uh, or excuse me, alleged actions dating back to February 13th of 2021. So this has been going on for a while. Benjamin Garlic, the fool, I mean the bitch, I, I mean, sorry, the evangelist that you guys see on the left-hand side of the screen right there, that picture, he's 32 years old, faces... The majority of charged offenses, he is accused of five counts of aggravated rape of a child, mm -hmm. five counts of aggravated sexual battery, soliciting sexual exploitation of a minor under the age of 13 years old. And what do we call that, ladies and gentlemen? A pedophile. Just so you know, prepubescent, before they hit the age of Puberty is pedophile. After that, it's called hebophile. I noticed some people spelled it wrong in the last video. It's H-E-B-O-P-H-I-L-E, hebophile. Okay, so he is indeed going to be considered a pedophile under the age of 13 years old and continuous sexual abuse of a child, according to Rutherford County Circuit Court. So let me ask y'all a question before we even get into this story and thank everybody who sent me this. How many of you guys go to church? I haven't been to church in a long time and I have no qualms with people going to church. I really don't. I'm fine with that. I grew up in the church. I actually used to be a youth counselor for Kennecut Camps. So obviously that's based in Christianity. And I think it's an amazing uh, program that's based out of Missouri. So I have taught the Bible. I have taught Christianity to a point. And not only do people go to church, but people blindly trust the church because they think of it as they're, they're helping you get to heaven and you got to trust somebody who's helping you get to heaven, right? You got to trust them with your life, with your information, and you got to trust them with your children. Apparently, that's what people think. So I guess they think that sin does not exist in the church. I guess they believe that sin does not exist in people who are going around with the Bible, what I call Bible thumpers and thumping the Bible at people and trying to tell them you need to do this and that with your life. All the while, they're not living according to that old heavenly word of theirs, right? Some people go to church every Sunday. Some people go to Bible study and, and vacation Bible school. You drop your kids off. And I'm going to tell you something. And shout out to my daughter's mother. I got to give her a shout out. I don't know if she's watching, but if she is, big kudos to her. Because anytime my daughter has ever gone to vacation Bible school, guess where her mama was? Her mom was at the school with her. 
I have always appreciated how she's never put my daughter in precarious situations and stuff like that. But you really have to have a good mind and a good heart. And you really have to just have a good sense about what's just not safe to just leave your kids. And I'm sorry, but these people are adults. I don't give a fuck if they're in the church or not. I'm not about to just leave my kids with these people. And the only way that I can figure that these people are doing what they're being charged with is either to their own kids or because some people dropped and dumped their kids off with these fools. Now, tell me if I'm wrong about that. Have I said anything wrong or did I just say something that might have hurt some people's sensibilities? Okay. The pastor's wife, who was 29 years old, her name is Chantal, S-H-A-A-N-T-A-L. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but that's how Law and Crime wrote it. Garlic, G-A-R-L-I-C-K, was also indicted on two counts, facilitating aggravated rape of a child and aggravated abuse, neglect, and endangerment of a child eight years old and under. Hmm. In December 2022, the couple started a GoFundMe. Now, now, how many times have I told at least the AFC? Maybe some people's first time listening to me. I'm not against GoFundMe at all. But what I am against is people blindly seeing a GoFundMe and just throwing money in it, especially when it has something to do with kids or with murder investigations or death or abuse. Let me show you guys this GoFundMe. Let me show you a shot that. I want you guys to take a look at this. I don't know if you can see it because it's a little blurry. But they put up a GoFundMe to the tune using God's name, God's holy name, Jesus and the Lord, Holy Spirit and all of that good, wonderful mess. Right? And put this up saying they need a garlic family ministry van so they can go around the United States of America and preach the holy world Holy word to people's children. All while sexualizing them. So basically, they were asking for $40,000 and and you had uh, how many donors? 19 donors. Wow. Somebody anonymously donated $4,000. That is crazy. I wish somebody would anonymously donate me $4,000. I mean, my goodness. I actually feel like I'm actually out here doing the Lord's work. Can we band together and send DJ $4,000? One thing you know is I'm not going to abuse your kids. I'm just saying, damn. They've got up to $18,000, almost $20,000, $40,000 is their goal. And they have a van and they're taking this van and driving and their goal was to drive around the country I guess you better hide your kids and hide your wife because they raping everybody kids out here. The campaign, which included a photo of the parents with six children, began by quoting the Bible and explained that the family's minivan had more than 418,000 pedophile miles on it. I added that last part in there. The van pictured here now has over 418,000 miles on the odometer and by his grace still chugging along. My first responsibility is to be a husband and a father. Our vehicle allows me to fulfill the role or that role while we travel together. Benjamin Garlic wrote from San Antonio, Texas. So Texas takes another L. This year, our family once again outgrew our vehicle And while we were excited to receive our new baby into our family, we knew that in the Lord's timing, he keeps using the Lord's name, he would open the door once again for us to get a vehicle we prayed for. And pray we did. His timing is perfect. This week, he opened the door to find the van we have been praying for. Here we are with the new van. And I want y'all to keep in mind that this man has been taking his junk and Rubbing it on children or messing with children in some shape, form, or fashion. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. Right? The parents said getting the new van was a miracle, even 
as they asked their faithful supporters and prayer warriors to pray, or excuse me, to help pay for the vehicle during the 60 day period of special financing with no interest. So let me skip some of that. A new version uh, of the message was also written in Spanish. The YouTube video shows that garlic had often preached before congregations in Spanish. So he's out here diversifying his uh, child sexual abuse. On February 13th, Benjamin Garlic provided an update on the fundraiser. God has been working in an amazing way. Please help us in the final stretch to get over the goal. He urged again for donations. Two Februarys earlier, however, the preacher, a son of an evangelist himself, allegedly committed the series of sex crimes that currently have him behind bars. While Benjamin Garlic was reportedly held in the Rutherford County on a $750,000 bond, Chantal, his wife, reportedly posted a $75,000 bond and was released. What do y'all want to bet that maybe some of that was probably from that GoFundMe money that they just accrued? Chantal Garlic reportedly filed for an order of protection against her husband as recently as August, so she's trying to play the victim, the victim role, and I don't think she should get away with that. Arraignments are expected to take place at 9 a.m. on September the 26th, which was actually yesterday, depending on when you're watching this video. Let me give you guys a fair usage, and I'm going to give y'all some more of my opinion about this, because this is wild. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. If you guys are watching, do me a favor and please hit that thumbs up. We've been trying to kind of work our way back into normalcy, so if y'all will hit that thumbs up, it'll bring more people in to watch this story with us, okay? Let me take a pause real quick and let me say thank you to Kim Wallace who sent in a $5 super chat. Said, Jay, never apologize for saying the truth. People need to stop being butthurt. <laughs> That's an interesting way to put a butt there. You put a peach there. I like that. Hurt over it. This is real. It's happening. And you, and you have every right to say how it is. Thank you, heart emoji. Thank you, Kim Wallace. Let me give a shout out to Rue for eyes. Said, you have to protect your babies at all costs. And I 100% agree with her. Thank you. Thank you so much for showing some love. And everybody who's here, man, I definitely appreciate it. They call me B. I see you, Soldier Girl. Thank you as well, all of you guys. Let's go ahead and get this thing started. The parents paid $75,000 bail. No, So here's the thing. So they didn't pay $75,000 bail. You know, they paid 10% to a bondsman. So you're talking about maybe $7,500. Because when I was saying that they probably took some of that GoFundMe money, they were asking for a total of, of, of $40,000. And they only got 18000 so that wouldn't have covered the whole thing. But 7500 would have. 7500 definitely would have. So let's go ahead and get into this. I got a couple of news videos. Here we go. Edenton couple is under arrest tonight, charged with sexually oh. abusing at least three children, ranging in age from 10 months to 10 years. Manatee County Sheriff Rick Wells calls the couple pure evil and their actions vile. News Channel 8's Jeff Patterson has more on the arrests. Manatee County Sheriff Rick Wells is a veteran law enforcement officer. He says the charges this couple is indicted on turned his stomach. In a quiet neighborhood in Bradenton, neighbors noticed a large number of sheriff's deputies outside of one home, but didn't know what was going on. I see the, the cops and everybody go to the street for a look. Today, Manatee County authorities announced a couple that lives on this street has been charged with capital sexual battery. Oh, it's horrible, horrible, horrible. I never know what happened next to you. The sheriff's office says 24-year-old Nicholas Bassler Jr., and his girlfriend, 24-year-old Sierra Campany, performed sex acts on three children. That doesn't look like the right story. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see. Is that the right one? That's not the right story. But this one is. But that one was just as bad, too. Here we go. I'll correct it on the replay. A traveling pastor has been indicted in Murfreesboro for alleged child rape. 
Benjamin Garlic faces 12 charges, the most serious five counts of aggravated rape of a child under eight years old. The five counts of aggravated sexual battery of a minor under the age of 13. Now his wife, Chantal, also charged in facilitation and aggravated child neglect. News 2's Kendall Ashman joining us live in studio with more. Kendall. Well, Mark Murphy's Leads haven't released any information on the number of victims, how Garlic knew them or when the rapes happened. So we took a look into his work as a traveling pastor. We came across YouTube videos of Garlic speaking at various churches from here in Tennessee to Georgia to Minnesota. Now, I then spoke with the Murfreesboro pastor who tells me Garlic hosts conferences in both English and Spanish at churches across the country. The pastor tells me he's not ready to go on camera until Garlic is proven guilty, but he tells me he visited visited Garlic at the Rutherford County Adult Detention Center. He says he's known Garlic since he was a child and is still in shock over the news. He tells me that Garlic is a father with a role model family. New details tonight into the working of a traveling preacher. He's charged with child rape in Murfreesboro. Our Michael Warwick learned more about his ties to Middle Tennessee. Tonight, traveling minister Benjamin Garlick is in the Rutherford County Jail behind me. The case against him of child sex abuse, Murfreesboro police say, is very active. Hay compañías que no preocupan de ti ni de que piensa usted de ellos. This video posted to Facebook from a San Antonio-based church shows traveling preacher Benjamin Garlick. Murfreesboro police say the 32-year-old faces five counts of aggravated rape of a child, among other sex crimes. Garlic, we're told, helped run a Spanish-speaking ministry called La Espada in Murfreesboro. We went to its posted address today and found an eviction notice with Garlic's name on it saying he failed to pay rent to Sword of the Lord Ministries. Sword of the Lord sent us this statement reading in part, quote, All children are a gift from God, and to harm one of them in any fashion is a gross sin and punishable by law. We are shocked and saddened by the news of the abuse of a child anytime, anywhere. Children, all children, are precious and deserve the full protection of all of us, end quote. Garlic's wife, Chantal, also faces charges, including facilitation of aggravated rape of a child. The pair are mentioned online as partner missionaries at churches in Orlando, Texas, and Indiana. When was the last time that you specifically took the time to pray for their salvation? This sermon he gave was posted to YouTube by a church in Minnesota. We also found last December the Garlics posted a GoFundMe from San Antonio asking for $40,000 to pay for a new ministry van. And let me tell you guys this. I don't understand, and I guess because I've always had like a fear of going to hell and a fear of the devil and and not pleasing God and all of that type of stuff. I'm sure a lot of you guys might actually be involved in the church or be involved with the religion because of that also. But I've always thought it was a real scary thing to play with God's name, to play with God's word, and to play with his, his pulpit and his ministry. To sit there and put on that suit and tie every day, get up there and preach the word from the Bible, looking those people in the face and they believe in what you're saying. They believe in your teaching and, and, and how hard you had to work to get to where you are to be an ordained minister to begin with, to sit there and know that you are being as phony and fake and lying and manipulative and out here ruining children's lives. Let me tell you guys this. I learned this from a movie and this is one of my favorite movies. It's called Traitor. Traitor that uh, featured uh, Don Cheadle, and I'm glad I remembered his name this time. And in the movie, it said, if you kill someone, it's as if you've killed all of mankind. And the FBI agent whose dad was a minister came in and told him and corrected him according to the, um, according to, I think it's the Quran. If you save a life, it's, a, it's as if you've saved all of mankind. So he was trying to tell Don Cheadle in that movie that you've done way more good than you have bad and that you will you will still be blessed behind the fact that you were trying to save a bunch of lives and you did save a bunch of lives. So with thinking about that, I'd be having to wonder, like, what's going to happen to people like this? So you're trying to lead folks, but you're taking advantage of their children. I think there's a special place in the devil's kingdom. For MFers like this. Now, let's keep going. 
Tonight, Murfreesboro police say Garlic is being held on a $750,000 bond. His wife has made bond and both are awaiting trial. Michael Warwick, WSMV4. We are coming on the air with shocking allegations out of Murfreesboro tonight. A Tennessee pastor arrested on a slew of charges, including five counts of raping a child. You're watching News Channel 5 at 10. I'm Hunter Hilglund. Pastor Benjamin Garlic as a guest pastor has spoken at several different churches in Tennessee and in other states. The question everyone now wants to know is how did this all happen? We asked News Channel 5's Jason Lamb to find out. Mug shots of Benjamin Garlic and his wife Chantal paint a picture of the traveling pastor far different than his presence online. Este libro de, este mensaje del... YouTube videos show Garlic often preaching to the Hispanic community in Tennessee and other states. On this GoFundMe page, he asks churches for $40,000 for a Garlic family ministry van to help him travel from place to place. But court records show Garlic was arrested this month after being indicted by a grand jury on five counts of aggravated rape of a child and five counts of aggravated sexual battery of someone under 13, among other charges, spanning from February 2021 to just last month. Garlic's wife Chantal was also indicted for facilitation of aggravated rape of a child and aggravated child abuse of someone less than nine years old. Chantal has bonded out. So we just got a copy of the indictment from the Rutherford County Courthouse. It does give a little more detail about what happened and when, but now we want to see if Mr. Garlic has anything to say about this. Listen closely right here. This is Jason Lamb with News Channel 5. We're looking for Benjamin Garlic. The person inside doesn't come to the door. It seems no one inside wants to talk to us. So I don't know if you could see or hear, but someone was at home and did respond when I knocked on the door. But when I told them who I was and who we wanted to talk to, they shut the blinds on the window next to me and on the window upstairs. The indictments don't say what child was abused or if there was more than one. Murfreesboro police say the investigation into the garlic case remains active and ongoing, so they can't say much more right now without any other answers coming Thursday from garlic's home. We'd just like to talk to Benjamin Garlic. We have some questions for him. Jason Lamb, News Channel 5. I'm sorry, I just noticed something. Let me back this up so y'all can see this. Let me show this again. Y'all see how this newsman is knocking at the door and he says, I'm looking for uh, Benjamin Garlic. Well, where is Benjamin Garlic at right now? That's right. He's locked up. He's in jail on a $750,000 bond. And do these news people really think that he's going to like get out on that high of a bond? Like that's pretty close to a million dollars. I just... I just thought that was weird. He might be able to bond out. But the chances are when somebody is accused of sexually assaulting children, the chances of them being able to get right back out on bond is just not likely. I'm just, I just thought that was weird. I'm just a person that notices things. Just thought that was a little bit odd. Now, we had some people in the chat who were saying, who specified, um, I don't see who it is but said he is an evangelist and not a pastor. What's the difference? He said he's an evangelist, not a pastor. So I kind of have an idea, but let's go with the full description by way of Google. I'm going to give you two descriptions. The basic job description of an evangelist is pretty straightforward from a scriptural standpoint. Go forth and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey the Lord's commands. Now, how do you become a evangelist, an ordained evangelist? Step one, you have to get a bachelor's degree. The first step along the traditional path to becoming an ordained minister is to obtain a bachelor's degree in theology or religious studies. Number two. Go to divinity school. 
Number three, get ordained minister license. Minister license required. It's pretty much a pastor. It's pretty much a pastor. An evangelist is a person who seeks to co uh, convert others to the Christian faith, especially by public preaching. It's pretty much a preacher. <laughs> that's, I'm pretty sure that's pretty much a preacher, but I thought I would give the definition so maybe people might wonder, like, what's an evangelist? Evangelist, preacher, it's kind of one of the same thing. But nonetheless, I hope, and, and so here's the thing. Even though they might not face real justice on earth, I hope that when this life is over, when their time is done on this earth, that's where they're going to get their real justice. And that really goes for everybody. So like I said, I think it's best for everybody listening and for everybody out there in the world to just really try to do as best as you can to make this world a better place than what you were given this world. Okay? Do as best as you can by your children. Protect your children. Don't leave your children with nobody. Don't leave them with a swim instructor. Don't leave them with pastors. Don't leave them with teachers because they might take them out for enchilada dinners. If you guys watch that other video about the, the track star that needed help working out and, and instead of working him out he went and took him to an inch a mexican dinner y'all have to go back and watch that video it was really crazy but don't leave your kids with anybody don't trust nobody don't even trust the daycares like they take them to certified daycares they got the cameras and recording them 24 hours 24 hours a day just be as careful as you can all right let me know what you guys think about this story and i hope that they get life a life sentence in prison because I think this is about as low as you could possibly get. Okay? Thank you. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, brace yourselves for this one because Indiana is producing yet another disgusting, nasty story. You guys will see the pictures popping up here in just a moment. But I got to tell you, this is probably one of the most gripping things I've heard in a long time. What happened to this baby and, it, and the baby actually survived, which is a blessing in itself. So it's kind of a bittersweet story. But I want to warn you, the content that you're going to hear, the details might bother you just a bit. But we're all grown here. I think most people can handle this content. But let me give you a disclaimer before we get too deep into the details. Some viewers may find the following content offensive and controversial. The information in this video comes from multiple sources including court records, official police charges, news web articles, and interviews. This video commentary also contains my personal opinions about the facts of this story. The point is to use this story as a cautionary tale in hopes of preventing tragedies like these to children going forward. Viewer discretion is advised. That is your official disclaimer. And I need to give you guys, I think, another disclaimer because the details really are this bad. Because I know some people told me when they heard the story, they cried about it. I was like, wow, like, it's really wild. But for YouTube's sake, because we want to be fair to our audience, the following, video con of, the following video contains material that may be harmful or traumatizing to some audiences. We're really talking about the details. You're not going to see pictures or a video or anything like that's going to be traumatizing. But the details are really more traumatizing than anything, okay? Let me give a quick shout out. Don Aguayo donated another $20 super chat. Said just because. You guys know I always put that prayer hand up. Because I truly, truly am so appreciative. Not only of you, but of so many of you guys that are able to keep your channel memberships. Somebody actually don't. Oh my God, Jimmy D. Okay, we're going to get back to that, Jimmy D. But thank you so much for everybody who keeps their channel membership and those who donated channel memberships. I know I missed somebody earlier. Let me see if I can find it. Somebody donated a channel membership earlier. That was Kim Wallace. So, Kim Wallace, if you're listening, thank you for donating that channel membership earlier to one of our listeners to the AFC. So, thank you for that. I wanted to shout you out earlier. And yes, Jimmy D is right. Jimmy D said... Why do I hear banjo music playing? Ba ba boom 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 boom. This is about as, whew. I don't know if I can say that. Hashtag snow billies. Hashtag hood billies. Hashtag when you when you date hood billies, you date death. What what was my other one I had? When you date hillbillies, you date death. Stupid is as stupid does, Lieutenant Dan. So getting this story from lawandcrime.com. Thank you so much. 
A man and two women in Indiana were arrested after a six-month-old baby that was in their care nearly died from being eaten by rats alive. I know y'all look at this house and I know y'all might find it hard to believe that they might have an infestation problem or a rat problem or a bug problem. A six-month-old innocent baby that can't speak for itself nor defend itself against the tyranny of its nasty-ass parents nearly died from being eaten alive by rats. So that would really make you have to think about a just a plethora of things. Number one, do you not know that you have a rat problem? Number two, do you not know that you have a kid that needs to be checked on? Number three, if you're checking on the kid, how do you not see bite marks? Number four, how do you not hear this kid screaming and hollering? Number five, just... Just my mind is blown. You can't be this level of dumb. This baby was suffering from dozens of rat bites many of which went, went all the way down to the bone of this six-month-old baby. Y'all hear me? The boy's parents, Danthony, David, that's, that's almost said Danthony, David Anthony, shot him bum, and, and shot him bum, whatever, and Angel, the mom, as well as his aunt, Delana Thurman, were taken into custody last week and charged with a spate of felonies in connection with what happened to the child, according to court records. David, the father, was charged with one count of neglect of a dependent resulting in serious bodily injury and two counts of neglect of a dependent, placing dependent in an endangering situation. His wife was charged with two counts of of the former and four counts of the latter, while Thurman, his sister, is facing two counts of neglect and placing dependent in an endangering situation. All three adults lived at the house with the victim. Let me say that again. Three grown-ass people living together, so this is his, what? His sister? Yeah, his sister. With, uh, it doesn't give her age. I'm kind of curious how old his sister is because I'm assuming his sister is old enough that she could be living on her own and why is she not? And then they live in this crummy ass place. Let me let me show y'all these pictures. I'm not just saying bad things about their home because they might be poor. I'm just saying they live in poor conditions because you can't live like this and not choose this. You can be broke and not be nasty. Hope everybody understands the difference. Look at this. This is filthy. This is disgusting. This is unkept. That is just nasty. Let me show you guys a couple more pictures. I can smell the stink coming off the screen. That's the same picture. Let me swap to this one. This is a different angle. You guys can see some crunched up cars over there on the right hand side. Baby chairs, a grill, who God knows what the hell is in there. Yard looked like it hadn't been cut in the past 40 years. And I think that one's the same picture and this one's the same picture. Yeah, yeah, okay. But let's get more into this story. Officers with the Evansville Police Department on September 13th, which was not that long ago, about a week ago, Responded to a call about a baby requiring a medical or, or requiring emergency medical attention. Got those words confused at a residence located in the 1600 block of South Linwood Avenue. The caller later identified David. The father told the dispatcher that he awoke to find his infant son covered in blood and said the boy's fingers appeared to have been chewed off. And yes, I agree, these clowns need to be buried under the jail, man. Just chew to the bone. Like, do you know how long that had to have been going on? I said, I bet the roaches even left. I Hey, I agree with you. Absolutely. Wow. Chewed off this child's fingers. Come on, man. Upon arriving at the scene, the first responders were pro provided uh, emergency medical attention stabilized the baby and transported him to a local hospital. 
Soon after arriving, the boy was transported by way of helicopter to a hos another hospital in Indianapolis for more specialized treatment. In hospital records provided to police, doctors described the baby as suffering a near-fatal event and required a blood transfusion after almost going into shock. That's how long this has been going on. Doctors said the baby suffered more than 50 bites to his forehead. Now, people might be wondering why we don't show the pictures of the child. First of all, the child survived. We don't want to put the child's name or, or, or face out there. And also, could you imagine how gruesome that probably looks? We're not posting that. How on God's green earth do you not ever see 50 forehead bites? Let me give you guys a personal theory of mine. I think that they knew that this was going on. And I think that they were hoping that this child would have died and they happened to get caught. That's what I think. When you're no longer getting the babies for benefits and the child is no longer paying for the things that you might want to want, want to get for your house and, and your free housing, Section 8 food stamps and all that type of stuff. Then, yes, I believe that they were trying to cause the death of this child because this doesn't sound accidental. This doesn't sound like something that could just happen overnight. 50 bites to his forehead, cheek and nose alone. But there's more. The boy was missing flesh from all four fingers and thumb on his right hand, exposing bone on all five fingertips. Most severe were the index and pinky fingers, which police said were missing the flesh halfway down each finger. The child also suffered additional bites to his arms, legs, feet, and toes. His internal body temperature was about 93.5 degrees and his blood pressure was 50 over 30 when he arrived at the hospital. That's pretty much a death sentence at that point. So they barely, barely got him in time. From what the doctors and nurses told detectives, they were very near. Uh, he was very near to death. EPD Sergeant Anna Gray told Evansville, Indiana, ABC affiliate WEHT when asked how serious the boy's condition was. The child had lost so much blood that the child actually had to have blood transfusions as well. Several of this baby's Fingers had to be amputated, obviously. She added, and I'm having difficulty reading this because it's really bothering me. She added, the only reason that we even knew about it was because the dad woke up and the baby was covered in blood. Back at home, police said that the baby's bassinet was about three feet away from where the parents from the bed where his parents slept in a room that was covered with clutter, half-eaten food, and rat feces. The detective said he observed a large amount of blood inside the bassinet along with a bobby pillow and a blanket that were both covered in blood. The diaper disposal container also had blood smeared all over it and what appeared to be rotten footprints left in the blood. Jesus Christ. When they asked about how they could possibly allow such horrors to be inflicted on a baby, the adults said they didn't hear the child cry, which we know that's a effing lie. That's not the truth. That's not the truth at all. Y'all tell me what human being is not going to cry being eaten alive. An adult would. This case where the rats had been living in the home, Gray told WHET, W E H T. The home was overwhelmed with rodents. They said they were trying to get rid of the rats, but I think they were like trapping about for a day at least. I mean, that's a lot of rats. The victim's parents are currently being held in the Vanderburg County Jail on a ten thousand dollar bond. Why they get a bond at all is just beyond me. 
while Thurman is being held on a $2,500 bond, and they are scheduled to appear in court at 1, 8, at 1 p.m. on Friday. And again, this story came out on September to 22nd. How did they get such a low bond? And with, to me, I think this is like, I, I don't know. Like, like, what can you call this? Like, that bond just seems too low. I don't see how they even get a bond. But let me give you guys the fair usage. Let me take a look at the news videos. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. It's absolutely insane. You guys, do me a favor, and if you're watching, please hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up. Smash that thumbs up. It'll help share this video so more people can see What's really going on with our kids out here? Here we go. Three people are in custody in Evansville this morning for a, the neglect of a 16, six month old baby. The baby is now receiving care at here at Riley Hospital for Children. And we do want to warn you that some of these details may be hard to hear. Evansville police tell us the girl had more than 50 rat bites across her body and police found the home in horrible condition. A report described feces on the floor, many rats in, in the home and trash scattered everywhere. The family only called medics when they woke up to find the baby covered in blood. Neighbors say they're shocked and never knew the horrors inside. People can put up a front or maybe you just don't know them well enough or behind closed doors there's things going on. How does a child get bit over 50 times and nobody knows that the child is bit? The family was already under investigation by the Department of Child Services. DCS lists the home last checked in, as September 9th. September the 9th. This house don't get that filthy, uh, filthy, filthy. This house ain't even filthy, it's filthy. This house does not get this freaking nasty and that overwhelmed with rodents within a couple of weeks. That is the thing that happens over months and months and months, if not years. So that means this house had been filthy for a long time. And you would also have to wonder if they were under investigation. Who the. Who in the world was doing the investigating? Did you just investigate in the front yard? You didn't go inside. There is no way possible that they should have missed this. If they were doing any alleged investigation, sounds like whoever was investigating need to be fired too, and prosecuted. This is ridiculous. There's no way they missed this. On South Linwood Avenue was described by police as deplorable and uninhabitable. Steve Mailing spoke with neighbors and police today about the case and the disturbing scenes of what was going on just next door. Well, Randy Brienne, if you spoke with the neighbors of those arrested, you'd think the home here on Evansville South Side was just like any other. The situation, however, was anything but. We do want to warn you, you may find some of the details in this story to be disturbing. They're good people. They have always been nice. They have always been cool. I've always seen her take care of that baby. If you spoke to people living on South Linwood Avenue, they would tell you their neighbors were good people. That's because they had no reason to believe otherwise. They take good care of their kid. I'm always seeing them loading food in the house. But everything was not as it seemed. People can put up a front or maybe you just don't know them well enough or behind closed doors there's things going on. And there were. Police made their way out to the home on South Linwood for a medic run. The only reason why we even knew about it was because the dad woke up and the baby was covered in blood. And that's that was our first involvement. We should have been involved. Someone should have picked up the phone and called us prior to that. Inside of the home, police say, were deplorable conditions. An affidavit cited feces on the floor, rats in the home, and trash scattered about. That affidavit was for three people arrested in connection to the severe neglect of a six-month-old. Parents David and Angel Shawnabaum and Delana Thurman, Angel's sister. Did you hear how severe the injuries were to the six-month-old? No. Police believe that a rat mice bit the skin off of the fingers of the child. Oh, my God. The child almost actually died, um, was rushed to Riley's children in Indy. Mm -mm -mm. I didn't know about the fingers. She told me that his face was disfigured. 
Yeah, they believe that he was bitten a little over 50 times. <laughs> Neighbor Teresa Favors didn't know how bad it was until we spoke with her. How does a child get bit over 50 times and nobody knows that the child is bit? Would you have ever suspected something like that to happen here? No. In the affidavit, police say the family was already under investigation by the Department of Child Services. The last home visit, September 9th. That was from a home-based therapy company called Maglinger Home Services. We reached out to the DCS to attempt to understand how the situation could have gone on for months. They told us they couldn't comment on the case. EPD Sergeant Anna Gray says it's one of the worst child neglect cases she's seen in her decades on the force. It's really hard to see that and it's really hard sometimes to just maintain composure and be professional. As for the accused, they face multiple charges of child neglect. A case so bad, it nearly killed a baby who couldn't defend itself. Any forms of neglect, no, none shown, none of that. I, I've never seen it 50 times. Well, the other... The Evansville Police Department has confirmed the six-month-old baby who suffered what police call a near-fatal event from rat bites has now been released from the hospital. Authorities say the child had over 50 bites to his forehead, cheek, and nose, and traumatic injuries on his arm and right hand that prompted amputation of some fingers. Now, the infant required a blood transfusion due to the amount of blood loss. The parents of the child, David and Angel Schonebaum, and Angel's sister, Delena Thurman, are now charged with neglect of a dependent. All three were in court today. The Schonebaums had bonds set at $10,000. Thurman's bond was set at $2,500. Those bonds are really a joke. Like, that didn't even amount to $15,000 total for three individuals. Like, that's crazy. And also... When you're talking to these neighbors, I'm sorry, I did also notice that. Shout out to my guy in the chat. I did notice that it seemed like the neighbors aren't necessarily, if they were a box of crayons, they might be, oh, a navy blue or brown, because I don't think they're the brightest crayons in the box. Just throwing it out there. Just, just throwing it out there. How did y'all not notice how filthy this place is that type of house would have a smell that is going to emanate and you're gonna smell it if that many rats are, are, are over there like that right the grass had been like like why don't people care about people cutting their grass like that's not a big deal no that's a huge deal it kills property value and it also shows you that people are nasty and disgusting on the outside and possibly on the inside as well if you ask me, I think this is why this is actually featured as my second story, because to me, in my personal opinion, this is one of the worst stories I've heard that is not viral. A child was being eaten alive and has no fingers on one hand now. Chewed up to damn near to death. And this ain't viral, but oh, we can go talk about Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift all goddamn day, right? Maybe Taylor Swift can tweet this out and, and actually do somebody some good. You know, since, since uh, Travis Kelsey jersey sales are going up by 400%, maybe they can help the children out here by just simply sharing a couple channels, like hitting the share button, hitting the retweet, or something like that. Just throwing it out there because I think that these babies deserve justice, and I don't think that they're getting justice. They didn't do an investigation. They're not taking these charges seriously. $10,000 and $2,500 don't even equal $50. $15,000 in bond shows me that they're going to get out with a slap on the wrist. They don't deserve to ever be around children ever again in life. That house, I agree, needs to be burned down, but it needs to be contained first. They need to make sure that they build like some type of thing where rats can't get out and just like ignite that thing, like set it on fire, burn the rats, burn everything in there. But anyway, let me know what you guys think about this story. Do you think it's that important? Do you think it's not a big deal? It's not in your neighborhood. Do you not give a crap? I personally care because this child absolutely needs an advocate. Please let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Okay, thank you.